Hello everyone, my name is Adrian Martinez. Uh, thank you for joining me today, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to be discussing hutchinson gilford progeria syndrome. Before we get too deep into what progeria is and you know what causes it, I want to share a quote with you from J.R.R. Tolkien, one of the greatest authors ever, that said, All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Man, does that resonate heavily with this disorder. These kids that I read about in the articles and watching the videos, they live their life to the fullest. They do not let this disease slow, uh, define their life. I wish I could say the same as far as living my life to the fullest, but you know, that's how it is. Okay, so what is progeria? It's a rare genetic disorder that is characterized by the premature aging and accelerated cardiovascular disease. The disorder is uniformly fatal with all children afflicted dying from a heart attack or a stroke at the age of 12. Here I've included a picture of a six-month-old baby with progeria, and you can see a little bit of aging around the eyes, uh, some hair loss, translucent skin. Compare that to a normal baby, this little Mexican Harry Potter baby holding his Uncle H's beer. Uh, don't let that be the example for every single normal baby. Um, then just in case you're worried about it, no, the baby didn't have more than two or three sips of the beer. Progeria is a sporadic autosomal dominant disorder. If we break that down sporadic, means a new change in that family as far as the genetic code is concerned. It's not a sex chromosome. Males, females you can have the same chance of developing that mutation. Dominant because only one copy of that gene needs to be changed in order to have the syndrome. If you take a look at that picture on the right there, you'll see a representation of a healthy mom, healthy dad, meaning that they don't have progeria and they don't have a family history of progeria. Yet their offspring has this uninherited mutation. And we'll dive more into why that is later on in the slideshow. With progeria, it is a de novo single base substitution. What that means is when we have a sequence of codons, we go into one codon and we go into one base and it just switches out with something, you know, let's say it switched out with um, G, we know it's supposed to be a C or, you know, whatever, whatever it is. This happens when there's mistakes during the DNA replication as a result of the erroneous incorporation of nucleotides by DNA polymerase. With progeria, the age of onset is usually the first year of life. You have growth failure, loss of body fat and hair, aged looking skin, small lower jaw, and a head that's disproportionately large compared to the face. What I found interesting was that no matter what your ethnic background is, if you have progeria, you're going to have the same similar features as any other person with the same disorder. The case study that I chose is one that was published by the U.S. National Library of Medicine. It involves a 14-year-old female that was unnamed, no family history of disorder, so remember that progeria is a sporadic autosomal dominant disorder. Um, prognosis was a provisional diagnosis of progeria. That prognosis is probably made just based off the physical characteristics of the patient. The ultimate cause that they found in the case study was a mutation in the lamin located in the nuclear matrix, and I'll go more into that later on. Now the way that they found their diagnosis was a progressive history of coursing of the skin. What that means is just dead cells accumulating on the epidermis. Failure to thrive, meaning that they were undernourished, not because the parents weren't feeding them, but because their body just can't process calories and an inability to squat for the past three or four years, you know, 2004, 2008. 2008 was when they published this article, or I'm sorry, the uh, case study. The patient had a short stature, prominent eyes, and hypoplastic chin, all uh, signs and symptoms of progeria. Now, unfortunately, there was no definitive therapy for, the, for progeria in this case study. And what they said was that the patient was generally treated conservatively. There aren't many treatments, if any at all, for progeria, so it made sense that they had nothing to go off of in their case study. Now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of what happens at the molecular level for progeria to come about, and that is the change from glycine GGC to glycine GDT in codon 608 and exon 11 of the lamin A or the LMNA gene. Now what we mean by an exon is just the DNA segment that codes for a protein. And you'll see right here exon 11 is where you would find codon 608. What we mean by a lamin is, uh, is a lamin is just a, the major ar architectural protein of the animal cell nucleus. Lines the membrane and provides a platform for the binding of proteins and chromatin. If we have an abnormal lamin A uh, protein, it's called a progerin. If enough progerin accumulates within the, within the cells in the body, 
that's what's going to cause that progeria disorder. Now the occurrence is one in eight million births. That's very rare. Um, males will have a ratio of 1.5 to females one uh, with a strong racial susceptibility for Caucasians who represent 97% of patients. Now aside from progeria, there are eight other disorders associated with the mutations of this one LMNA gene. I think one of them was a uh, muscular dystrophy and also weak muscles of the body. Now some diagnostic testing we're going to see for progeria include a cardiovascular test such as transthoracic echocardiography, which just uh, it's just various views of the heart from the abdomen or the chest. Um, the way you would get those views is by attaching a probe or, or an ultrasonic transducer. Uh, you also have your EKGs which just uh, measures the electrical activity of the heartbeat and then we move on to the physical exam and that includes taking the height and weight. Doctors will plot these measurements on a normal growth curve chart to compare whether the child with, with potential progeria is growing at the rate that they're supposed to be growing. You also see testing with hearing and vision. Uh, doctors will look for visible signs and symptoms that are typical of progeria. And the ultimate deciding, or I'm sorry, the ultimate diagnosing tool is the genetic test for LMNA mutations that can confirm the diagnosis of progeria. Are there treatment options? Fortunately, no, not really. There's no cure. Regular monitoring for cardiovascular disease may help with managing the disorder. Um, you can have over-the-counter uh, aspirin, like, like I've mentioned earlier, as a vasodilator for the uh, cardiovascular issues. You have statins to lower cholesterol, physical therapy for you know to help with the joint stiffness. And in dental care is usually follow all along the child's uh, life of progeria. What is the inheritance risk? Again, progeria is a sporadic autosomal dominant disorder. Though it comes out of any it can come out of anywhere at any time for any child that, that is born. There's no prenatal warning or no prenatal testing. Um, it's, it's just where we're at right now as far as research is and as far as treatment is available for these children. Here I have my evolutionary tree uh, for the LMNA gene and you can see that there's so much similarity between the Homo sapiens and just look, looking at the Pons paniscus you can see how similar they look, the same face and everything and then what, what surprised me was the genetic similarity was up to I think 93% for both sea otters and cougars. Is there progeria with animals? I, my theory is yes, just my dog, she's only two years old, yet she looks like an old lady. Um, I want to take this time to thank you for hearing me out. Thank you for being here with me going through this disorder. I hope that I was able to teach you so much because I learned so much doing this project. Thank you so much and have a great night. Almost forgot my literature cited. It's listed here. Thank you.